NEO Sports. Welcome, 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 welcome to high school basketball on 91.7 KNEO. This is the sporting outreach of Sky High Radio Network. Sky High Radio Network. KNEO Sports. Now, 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 let's go to the game. And a pleasant good evening, and we welcome you here to Seneca, Missouri, as we get set for day one of the People's Bank of Seneca Girls Basketball Tournament, along with Coach Daryl Harbaugh. I'm Ben Wolcott with your, your countdown to tip-off sponsors here this evening. People's Bank of Seneca and Prater's Pharmacy, Aurora and Buffalo have the first game of the day, and Aurora is winning 71-30, to so they will improve to 1-0 and in the tournament. As Aurora will face Southwest tomorrow night at 7.30 here. I guess closer to 7.15. And then Seneca will face Buffalo to start off the evening tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. So Southwest and Seneca going at each other here this evening about 16, 17 minutes away as there is a running clock here for this Southwest and Aurora game. And coach, uh, this Aurora team, uh, they won the district last year. They're in Seneca's district this year. And so far, I mean, it's only one game in, but they've looked pretty good. Yeah, they handle the ball well. They got a good a bunch of little guards that can handle the ball. They move the ball well, they pass it well. They're not a huge team, they're not big. You know, they don't have any just really big girls, but what they do is they make it up with their ball handing and their speed too. Seneca comes in 0-1. They lost to Neosho about a week ago. And actually, I think it was a week ago today, actually. Yep. As they fell to Neosho 47-31, the final score. And, Coach, it really was the height of Neosho that bothered the Seneca team because uh, you mentioned that Seneca does not have uh, a ton of – I mean, they have some size down low, but not anybody really tall. Yeah, no, not not really, not <clears throat> not what you consider tall for girls basketball. You know, they just don't have you. You know, Dalen Campbell's probably the biggest one they have down there, and I don't know what she is listed as five. Yeah. I it doesn't don't even, have, doesn't it on have there. maybe yeah. five six, five five. And five, Maddie six. Collinsworth is somewhere around there too, would be sure. my guess. Yep, it's just long in there, but you know, uh, a lot to do down inside. Not only height, but your footwork. And, and uh, there are a lot of football players that like to play basketball just to work on their footwork. Footwork down inside is a rare commodity. And if you can get yourself in the right position at the right time, uh, you can rebound with the best of them. Yeah, <coughs> excuse me. You think about Toby Moore and Matt County. Mm -hmm. He played basketball last year. You think about the Seneca team. Four of their five starters are basketball or football players uh, coming back this year. Right. Uh, four of the five uh, our football players and basketball players. So uh, definitely, like you mentioned, just trying to get some extra work in and uh, try and keep themselves in shape for the next year. And at this point, you know, four of those five uh, starters are seniors, so they'll be looking to repeat as well. Well, take, you know, along with that, uh, when I was coaching over at Yosho, we had uh, uh, Cody Holland, which Cody Holland was about 6'8", and 290, he played it. Pitt State played on their championship team as an offensive tackle, but he played basketball to get his footwork. Alan Barber played basketball for East Newton, and how many years did he wound up in the NFL? Played at Southern, went to the NFL. I mean, these guys' footwork is is key not only on the offensive line in football, but in any sport you do it is footwork, making sure you're in the right spot at the right time. Go ahead, take a timeout, come back with more of our pregame show countdown of tip-off sponsors, People's Bank of Seneca, Prater's Pharmacy here on the KNEO, Seneca Indian Sports Network. People's Bank of Seneca, proudly investing in our community and you since 1996. Locations in Joplin, Neosho, and Seneca. Bank PBS, peoplesbankofseneca.com. 
Prater's Pharmacy in Seneca is a proud supporter of the Seneca Indians. The pharmacy is open from 9 to 5.30 Monday through Friday and from 9 to 1 on Saturday. They offer an automatic refill program and internet refill service online at praterspharmacy.com and through their mobile apps. They also have a drive through window. Prater's Pharmacy at 1711 Cherokee in Seneca, 417-776-8701. Go Indians! Seneca Indian Athletics is sponsored by Prairie Top Chiropractic. Located at 4556 Quince Road in Seneca, chiropractic physician Seth Wilson offers chiropractic services to Seneca and the surrounding areas. For appointment information, their phone number is 417-776-4556 or discover more at facebook.com slash Prairie Top Chiropractic. Prairie Top Chiropractic where their slogan is, better health, better you. Hard work, dedication, and teamwork are vital to building a championship team. Those are just a few of the many qualities you'll find with the team at Satterley Plumbing HVAC and Mechanical Contractors. Since 1892, the Satterley team has been delivering championship service to Joplin and the surrounding area. Satterley is an authorized dealer for quality Linux products and can keep your home feeling comfortable all year long. For repair or replacement of your current heating and air system, contact the Satterley team today at 417-624-3660 or online at satterleyplumbing.com. Dairy Queen Grill and Chill in Seneca is the place to go before or after the game. Check out their amazing menu of fan-favorite blizzards like Oreo or Cookie Dough. Happy hour is daily from 2 to 5 p.m. That means everything you can drink from a straw is half price excluding premium shakes. Don't forget to grab one of their $7 meal deals or their signature stack burgers and top it off with a misty slush. The Dairy Queen Grill and Chill in Seneca located at 308 Washington, open daily from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Proud to support the Seneca Indians. A proud supporter of local high school athletics is Numac Electric. Serving Newton and McDonald County, they provide power for area homes and businesses and want to wish all the athletes much success throughout the season. For online bill pay and account information, the website is numac.com or 417-451-1515. Numac Electric, proudly serving Newton and McDonald County, where their slogan is your touchstone energy partner. The Seneca R7 School District is proud to support the student athletes and coaches competing in this game. High school activities help students learn life values such as hard work, dedication, and teamwork. The Seneca R7 School District is honored to serve such a great community and wants to thank all the Indian fans for their great support. The Seneca R7 School District, tradition, pride, class. A proud backer of the Seneca Indians is Campbell Biddlecombe Funeral Home of Seneca. Located at 1101 Cherokee, they are honored to serve the area with traditional service options including church and graveside services. They also have prearranged funeral plans. For more information, the phone number for Funeral Director Mike Steele at Campbell Biddlecombe Funeral Home of Seneca is 417-776-2251 or online campbell-biddlecombefh.com. And we welcome you back as we get set for Southwest and Seneca here this evening. And, Coach, like we said, the Seneca team fell last Monday night in the Yosho 47-31, the final score. Olivia Hazi led the way with 10. Callie Fields with 7. Those two are going to have to pick up a bulk of the workload here, uh, not only today but the rest of the season. And you saw Callie who, you know, we were talking to Drew after the game. She hadn't played basketball since seventh grade, and the longer she was in that game, the more comfortable she got. Yeah, and it'll be that way all year long. She does some really good stuff. She does, I, I'll guarantee if you talk to her, she probably doesn't think she's doing the right things, but she's doing a lot of good things. A coach can see the little steps of where you're supposed to be, the hustle you have, and, and, and she's, she's going to get nothing but better throughout the year. The Southwest team opened up in the Verona tip-off classic last week. I don't have if they won or not, so we don't know what their record is, but they're also probably a couple games into their season as well. And this is a very 
young team for Southwest. They only have one senior and two juniors on their team. They have a bunch of freshmen on their team as well. Well, you know, a small school. I, you know, I don't know if they're 3A in basketball or not, Ben. They used uh, to be. Yes, Class 3, okay. District 12. Okay. And so I've seen it when I was coaching here. Man, they've had a, they had a good team come through, and uh, they were tough to compete with. And then, you know, up and down. You ride the roller coaster, and then they had a few years that uh, there just wasn't a whole lot. Uh, I know they got a big girl that's out. Which that might be Jaretze Quintanilla. I apologize if I pronounced that wrong, but yeah. she's six one, and uh, the next the closest girl is five six. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that may that obviously might hurt Southwest, but that might help the Seneca team. Yeah. Well, you you hate to see any injury or anything, you know. That's but it's part of sports and it's a part of the game, whether. It, be a bad part, but right. uh, no, I always wanted to see uh, all the teams play, and I wanted to see the teams play. I, when I was coaching, I wanted to beat the team at full strength. That's what I wanted, you know. I didn't want to say here, oh, well, they, yeah, but they didn't have that girl. Yeah. No, you want to beat the team at full strength. You want to see the kids play, and, you know, you just want to be competitive. Yeah, after today, uh, Seneca really <clears throat> ramps things up. Uh, like we said, Tuesday, Wednesday, and actually we didn't say this, but Thursday's games got moved to Wednesday because uh, if you haven't figured out by now, <laughs> there's kind of an important event on Friday morning at 11 o'clock in Columbia, Missouri that we will be at. And so uh, they moved the date up so people could travel Thursday night if they wanted or uh, not have to worry about trying to get out after uh a late game on Thursday night. So uh, the People's Bank of Seneca tournament this year, instead of Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, it will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, this year. It, Seneca, it, Aurora, 7.30, and Southwest and Buffalo, I believe, are the first game uh, that. It will, be, it will be a mass exodus around noon here <laughs> on Thursday. Everybody be going up. I know they probably got their – we have our – Reservations. I'm not sure where you're staying. I was going to ask you. Same place. Oh, Drew. Okay. Same. So, yeah, it's it's just going to be a mass exodus, and and we're going to uh, at these, Wh whoever's these, the last one to leave turn the turn lights the on. lights off in Seneca. I hate to say that for anybody who's listening, but it's true. <laughs> the fans here at Seneca understand football. They understand good football, and they love to support the kids in this school, and they love to support the teams, and. Uh, I guarantee you we will we will bring up a, a, a bunch with us. Go ahead, take a time out, come back with more of the preview after this on the KNEO and Seneca Indian Sports Network. Churches everywhere preach that heaven and hell are real and that a relationship with Jesus Christ is the only way to get to heaven. When you hear such a message, you can do one of two things. Billy Graham. First, you can reject it, laugh it off, take it lightly, or you can weigh the facts, heed the warning, and gauge your life and actions accordingly, and repent of your sins, and turn to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So what does repent of your sins mean? It means you're sorry for the sins that you've committed, and you ask the Lord to help you stop sinning. It is never too late to repent, never too late to turn to Christ. All the way through the scriptures, it teaches that God is a God of love, forgiveness, and mercy. And he wants you to know all three. Someone is ready to talk with you right now. When you call 888-388-2683, that's 888-388-2683. We're the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association.
era in local sports begins. The Roper Kia Four State Sports Report is where you'll find all of your local sports information. Join sports director Michael Imami and reporters Chaz Wright and Tashina Coleman every night. We cover Little League, high school athletics, Missouri Southern, and Pittsburgh State, along with countless community colleges in the four states. We cover it all. So whether you're a Chiefs, Cardinals, Eagles, or Wildcats fan, you won't want to miss the Roper Kia Four State Sports Report. Happy Egg supports the family farmer because they've seen the difference a choice like this can make. Now you can grow for Happy Egg and choose to raise hens the right way, the happy way. When you grow for Happy Egg, you're growing for a family-owned and operated business. You're raising happy hens on 10-plus acres who will lay happy eggs. You're working for yourself. As a Happy Egg grower, you'll receive new flock cost support and yield-based compensation. Visit happyegg.com grower to apply today. Hi, this is Jamie Lankford with Lankford Insurance at 910 Washington Avenue in Seneca, Missouri. My wife, Terry, and I are proud to serve our local area, and we're also proud to support the Seneca High School Pride Marching Band. Lankford Insurance specializes in life, agribusiness, commercial, and personal insurance needs. Please stop by and see us at our office or call us at 417-776-LIFE or visit us at www.midaminsurance.com. If you're a weekend warrior who likes to go, 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 don't let pain put the brakes on your pace. When you need help with an injury that keeps you from moving, you want an orthopedic team with a proven track record. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is nationally recognized and were recently named CareCheck's number one hospital in the market and top 10% hospital in the state for hip fracture repair. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the experience you need to keep pace with life. And we welcome you back to Southwest and Seneca getting ready to go here in the next couple of minutes. And Coach, you've mentioned these teams have met before. Seneca 7-2 and two against this team since 2009, 2-0 in the playoffs. And they've won four in a row. The last time they lost to this Southwest team was in 2015, but it's been a while since they've played each other. I remember 20, that game. 2018 is the last time these two teams met. So well, yeah, we, they, they don't meet often. Me and the, me and the coach, uh, uh, he was a good coach. I can't remember his name right now. We liked it. We got along very well. And, and like I said, they're there for a couple years. That first year, the 2015, I'm telling you what, he had some dogs that can play. They had a good team. And I think they – I don't know if they won their district. I know they played for their district championship. But uh, they had a good team. But they had a good group of seniors come up. And then they come back and – and we beat them the next year, and they had a girl that could play that year too. I mean, she lit it up. She is a little old tiny thing, but she lit it up. And uh, but but we come out on top. I think we we won the rest of the time. But uh, it it it's a small school that sitting out there south of Cassville that just it's just like this <laughs> yeah. runs up and down. It's just like any small school. It's like Seneca. Yeah. I was going to say Seneca. You could say the same exact thing. <coughs> exactly. Drew Schulte has done an excellent job since he's been here. Cause I, I think they've competed for the district championship and five or six, you know, three or four times at least in his uh, seventh year here. Cause his first year was my first year in 2017. And, you know, yeah. he finally got over the hump in 2021 and beating it and yeah. winning it. But, uh, you know he's he's competed for one at least three times that I can remember. So we well, was playing down here uh, before you got here, Ben. Last game we had uh, we were playing Mount Vernon, 40 to 40, tied going into the fourth quarter for district district semifinals. But uh, quite come out on top. As we're trying to figure out the starting lineups here as they go. Uh, for this uh, Southwest team. We'll try and get them here as they continue to say things as we'll try and figure out. I got I got four of the five, <laughs> and I think I got, I got all five, and now they turned the lights off on me. But you're starting the lineup sponsored by Prairie Top Chiropractic and Langford Insurance. Let's get first four Southwest. Leading it off is going to be, well, actually, let me just make sure I got all our starters before I announce 
all of the starters here this evening. As it looks like it might be the same starting five for Seneca uh, as it was last time. So first the starting lineup here for Southwest. Uh, number 24, a senior number uh, number 24, Alexis Rockstat, a junior number 20, Allison Harling, a uh, junior number 10, Bree Huford, a uh, uh, freshman number 12, Olivia Nem, and a freshman number 13, Addison Payne. Head coach is Sean Johnson. <coughs> For Seneca, Sydney <coughs> Staley, Dalen Campbell, Batty Collinsworth, Ashton Lannon, and Olivia Hazy here for Seneca. Southwest wins the top here, the toss here this evening, going right to left here on your computer screen in the first quarter of play. Uh, Seneca with the triple team. The jumper is no good. The fight for the rebound goes to Maddie Collinsworth. Seneca, the home white uniform. Southwest, the road black uniforms. Driving to the hole is Hazy, no good. And coach, that's what we've talked about is Hazy has had some open looks that have been unsuccessful as I think the ball just went out of bounds. Yeah, it got poked out. But, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, it's it'll be better. It'll be more and more. They'll get more into it. Hazy will get more used to the speed. She played a lot of JV, a little bit of J varsity last year, but she'll get used to the speed. She'll start making more layups. So that ball gets poked out of bounds. So Seneca, or excuse me, Southwest will maintain possession as they're trying to trigger it in next to the Seneca bench as they're able to get it in. Driving to the hole, a little floater in the lane was no good for Rockstad, and it goes out of bounds. Back to Seneca, no score. 15 seconds into the count, or 50. 50, yeah. 5 0 seconds into the contest. We drove in. We got a good look. It just didn't go down. Let's see if we can move the basketball and make a good look here. Tazi picks up her dribble. Campbell calling for it down low. Can't get it to her. It's poked around, and Southwest going to come away with it, and then they trip over their own feet. Does Rockstat. So Seneca gets it back as Lannon is going to commit an offensive foul. Anytime you lower the shoulder, that's usually going to get you a call. First team foul and her first foul. And once again, oh my gosh. we will, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about that, but I uh, forgot to mention once again, we will try and mention this until it becomes normal to mention it as Landon almost committed her second down low and the shot is no good, but I think Campbell picks up the foul. Her first team second. So two free throws are coming for Olivia Nem. And it's five team fouls a quarter, and then you're shooting two free throws. There are no more one and ones. The first free throw is no good. One more coming. But there are no more one and ones. That's a National Federation rule. That is not a Missouri rule. As the second free throw is no good. So still no score. A minute and a half into the game. Landon with it for Seneca. Swinging it right wing side to Hazy. Hazy going to drive to the hole. Can't bank it in, but she will go to the free throw line for two. First team foul on Southwest. As the foul is on Bree Huford, her first team's first. We got a 1 2 2 defense from Southwest. You got to attack the middle. Our, our, our two posts down inside, the big girls down inside, are not flashing to the middle. That's what the girls on the outside are looking for. As Hazy has broken the ice here, a minute 45 into the contest. As she makes the first free throw, one more coming. As here comes the second one, and that rattles in. So 2 nothing Seneca. 6.15 to go here in the first quarter. Sydney Staley is a max effort person, but she sometimes loses contain and kind of picks up some cheap fouls. As Seneca coming with a double team and a jump ball, possession arrow will give it to Seneca. New Mac Electric, Prater's Pharmacy, Pro Lou Maintenance Center, Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Seneca True Value, all sponsoring the broadcast is Callie Fields. 
checks in for the Lady Indians. As I think Hazi has it, swings it over to Fields. Down low in the post to Campbell, working against the smaller player. And I think that's one as it goes off of Harling back to Seneca. But I think that's one that, and Trulti looks like he's saying it has used the backboard. Yeah, yeah, she made a great move down inside. She just didn't kiss it off the glass. She'll get better at that too. Collinsworth will trigger right it there. in, gets it into Campbell, left handed layup up and in for Dalen Campbell. So a good set play. Out of the timeout there for Seneca. It's 4 0 with 5.34 to go here, as I think Fields picked up the foul. And I would be correct. That's her first. Third team foul, and that's something you have to be careful of as a 30 second timeout. We'll take it with you. Seneca, 4 0, 5.34 to go in the first quarter on the KNEO and Seneca Indian Sports Network. At Pro Lube Tire and Auto Center, we know what it means to rely on your vehicle. We race all year and know how to get that extra inch out of every part. Precision, quality, and reliability are not just words to us. It's what we do every day. We know you rely on your vehicle to perform for your family. From oil changes to full-on repairs, Pro Lube gives you the best racetrack team experience so you can be worry-free. Pro Lube Tire and Auto Center, where we get it right on the road and the track. And we welcome you back as Seneca 4-0 lead, 5.34 to go here in the first quarter. Campbell Buddicum Funeral Home, Big Nickel, Missouri Southern State University, Marine Center Incorporated, Langford Insurance, Dairy Queen of Seneca, First Community Bank, and Lost Creek Wireless all sponsoring the broadcast as Southwest gets it in, but kind of a dangerous spot as in the corner with it is Rockstad and she gets double teamed and they call a foul. <laughs> And we'll have to see who it's on. I think you're hoping it's on Collinsworth. You just. And it is on Collinsworth, her first, um, team's fourth. You get someone trapped in the corner, you don't bail them out by slapping at it. And like I say, we went a long time on that. As faking the three, but getting caught in the air because Callie was going to block it, was Hardling. Well, Callie's quick. And she's going to figure out she'll be, you know, she'll be better and better where she's supposed to be at on defense. Hawsey with the basketball here for Seneca, and this Seneca team is going to have a lot of growing up to do quickly, as four of the five starters off of last year's team are no longer on the team as Campbell travels with the basketball. We mentioned that last week, but a lot of returning players are not back this year. So there are a yeah. lot of players that got JV experience last year that are going to have to get some varsity minutes. And Fields has to be careful to not bump, and they there call a jump ball as Staley and Fields force it. It will stay with Southwest, though, on the possession area. Well, you, you notice that time they've got a double team, but they didn't go slapping at it until the girl broke. It's Callie Rhodes set to check in for Seneca in for Sydney Staley. 4.55 to go here in the first quarter. Seneca out four to nothing. Got ourselves a baseball game on our hands. Southwest only brought seven people the entire game as a steal by Fields goes up for the floater, can't get it, and Rhodes <laughs> pushes on the way trying to get the rebound. Fifth team foul, her first. Since it's a player control foul, are they shooting? Well, no, they're going after the ball. I mean, she didn't have the ball. So it is the fifth team foul, so free throws are coming. Yeah, she was going she was going after the ball, and it didn't matter who came who had it or was coming down with it. As Rockstad will go to the line for two. First free throw is nothing but net. So Southwest on the board now. So it's four to one. One more free throw. They have somebody set to check in as she goes two for two from the charity stripe to cut the lead in half as I don't know what number. I think it was 11 checked in. All right. Swine pool checked in. Their for numbers are hard to see Thank on you. their uniforms. Yeah, black they? on red. So Seneca 4-2, 435 to go and a steal. But Ro Field steals it back for Seneca. 
as Hazy with it. Drives, kicks out to Rhodes. Her floater trying to bank it in, no good. And the rebound goes to Southwest. They pick up their dribble in the back court, get it in the front court to Nem. Try and swing it cross court to Harling. A long two is long, and it's tipped out of bounds off of Rockstad. Sponsors here this evening, People's Bank of Seneca, Crowder College, Christian Healthcare Ministries, Seneca School District, and SGA Unlimited. As Hazy with the basketball for the Indians, down low to Maddie Collinsworth, and coach is clapping his hands. Well, what'd we do? One flash to the middle, and we hit the girl in the middle, and we scored. So it's 6-2, almost a steal, but Southwest able to maintain it, and then the ball goes through the hands of Harling. So it goes back to Seneca with 3.40 to go here in the first quarter as Collinsworth having to trigger it in closer to the little bit of a Seneca student section, which is mostly contained of the football team. Well, I think they just got done with practice. Here we go, Here we go again. There Cam, you go. Left-handed layup up and in for Seneca. So Campbell now with four, Collinsworth with two, and Seneca an 8-2 lead with 3.20 to go here in the first quarter of play. Collinsworth gambled on a steal and makes Southwest travel as Ashton Lannon comes back in for the Lady Indians. Southwest Missouri Bank, the Osho Daily News, Saturday Plumbing, HVAC and Mechanical, and Prairie Top Chiropractic, all sponsoring the broadcast. Notice the last two trips down there, Ben. We hit the girl at the high post on that 1-2-2. Two, two. Weakness of a 1-2-2 two, two is the high post. Lannon will bring it up here for the Lady Indians. You have Collinsworth flashing down low, and she dribbled it off her foot. I think she went somewhere before realizing she was going there. <laughs> well, her foot got in the way. Yeah. She's trying to dribble, but her foot got there first. 3.05 to go here in the first quarter. Southwest down 8-2. to two. Snam loses it, and Lannon the steal, and it's a three on nothing. As Lannon going to go up for the right-handed oh, layup. No good. Fields offensive rebound and the left-handed layup up and in for Callie Rhodes. So a good second effort there for the Indians as they have a 10-2 lead. 2.35 to go here in the first quarter as Huford with it and jump ball. Possession arrow will give it to Seneca as Sophia Connell will check in as well as Sydney Staley. In for Campbell and Collinsworth. And that's the thing about it is he's got he's got some kids that came up in JV. He's got a lot of subs so they can keep fresh throughout the whole game. Lannon swings it to Rhodes. Rhodes working left wing back to Fields. Top of the key. Works it right wing to Staley. Driving baseline. Floater no good. They call a blocking foul. So Staley will go to the line for two. We'll see who they call it on. As Swanpool won her 11. first team second. I heard 11, so. Yeah. So the first free throw is up for Staley, and that's no good. Staley's usually an aggressive player. She will take the ball to the basket, and she's not scared of anybody down there. Yeah, she's not afraid of contact because no. <laughs> she has a lot of charges Usually it's a charge or a block, and it just <laughs> depends on if she's out of control or not. So one more coming for Staley. And the second one rims around and goes in. So it's an 11-2 Seneca lead, 2.15 to go here. The first quarter, and the ball gets thrown out of bounds by Southwest. So it will go back to Seneca. Southwest's only points are off of the free throw line. They having a hard time getting anything set up. <coughs> it's landing, it? double dribble. Nine point Seneca lead, 11-2, 2.06 to go here in the first quarter. Four State Sports Report, Missouri Farm Bureau agent Josh Dotson, the Osher Area Chamber of Commerce, all sponsoring the broadcast. This Fields is working against Harling. They get it in the front court, kick it in the corner. 
Rockstead who drives, then gets double teamed and a jump ball as Connell and Staley force the jump. But it will stay possession for Southwest. It will trigger it in right baseline. And they call a foul, I think down low on Seneca. Is already in the bonus is Southwest. As Connell picks up her first. Somehow you have six team fouls, which they only show five on the scoreboard, because right. once you get to five, it doesn't matter. But uh, as the first free throw is up and short for Rockstad, one more coming. But somehow, everybody that has a foul, it's only one apiece. Nobody has two yet. As the second one rims out and the rebound goes to Staley. Well, I, I would say give Ashton time. She'll pick up another <laughs> one. And that was almost it as mm -hmm. Southwest picks up their third. As Rockstad picks up her first. I think what saved Lane in there is not extending the elbow. Yeah, well, she just got bumped. I mean, that's fine. She's got to she's got to learn to handle the basketball when you get bumped. So what? It's laying in, swings it right wing side to Rhodes. Free throw line to Staley, who loses it, gets it back, trying to get it to Rhodes, and a nice steal there as Rockstead anticipated it, and Rhodes will pick up her second, and Rockstead will go back to the line as that is how. Southwest is getting their points are from the charity strike. Yeah, Cali, there's another one. Cali's aggressive. Did they call a foul on 10? Well, um, it can't have been on 10 because Seneca doesn't have a 10 out well, maybe there. Maybe they just haven't put it up yet. That was the, oh, that was the foul on the Seven previous one. As... Cordy Hancock checks in for Seneca. And I did not catch you checked in for Southwest as going 0 for 2 there was Rockstead. So she's 2 for 6 from the charity stripe. As a team, they're 2 for 8. See if we can't handle the ball, get the passing going, get some movement going. It's Hancock going to drive, gets it poked out, goes right to Fields. Fields with it, top of the key, swings it to Lannon. Landon drives her jumper in the lane, no good, but offensive rebound for Connell. Can't get the bucket to fall, but a nice effort there by her. As Bree Hufford picks up her th third already. Mm. Well, it was a good move by Ashton going inside. She needs to take another dribble to get it closer to bring the defense to her to pass it off, but a good rebound by Sophie down inside. And when you only bring seven players, one of them being in foul trouble no, is not yeah. good for you. Yeah. So the first free throw by Connell is up and in. One more coming as this has become a free throw shooting first quarter. Yeah. I've, which I've, is kind of what it was against Neosho as well. As Connell goes two for two. Yeah. And Seneca is five for six from the charity stripe here in the first quarter. They have a 13-2 lead, one minute to go here in the first quarter of play. Southwest has the ball stolen from them by Staley, gets it to Lannon. Lannon going to have to watch from the foul from behind and gets it poked from behind. It's on the other end, driving is Harling, and Staley sneaks it out from behind, but it will stay possession for Southwest. Keep up on the latest Seneca broadcast ballgame schedule. Sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash KNEO Radio. Follow us on Twitter at KNEO 917 Sports as Jasmine Rivas comes in for Southwest. Southwest to trigger it in left baseline, and Fields just stole it away. That's what you get from Cali. Fast, quick, loves playing defense. Let's handle the basketball. Let's move it. Hancock with it for Seneca. Down low to Connell. Kicking it out, trying to get it to Landon, and Landon can't save it. 30.8 seconds to go here in the mm. first quarter. Seneca up 13-2. to two. Everyone at the New York Daily News wish the Seneca Indians good luck here this evening. 
Southwest with it in the back court, gets it in the front court, swinging it right wing side to Revis, trying to get it back in a steal by Fields. It's a one on two, and she may have gone too fast. Can't get up with it, but she does the smart thing, work it around to Staley. Now back to Lannon with 10 here on the clock. Is that right wing three for Fields is short to end the first quarter of play as Seneca has a 13-2 lead at the end of one. Head to the second here on the KNEO and Seneca Indian Sports Network. Prater's Pharmacy in Seneca is a proud supporter of the Seneca Indians. The pharmacy is open from 9 to 5.30 Monday through Friday and from 9 to 1 on Saturday. They offer an automatic refill program and internet refill service online at praterspharmacy.com and through their mobile apps. They also have a drive through window. Prater's Pharmacy at 1711 Cherokee in Seneca, 417-776-8701. Go Indians! Seneca Indian Athletics is sponsored by Prairie Top Chiropractic. Located at 4556 Quince Road in Seneca, chiropractic physician Seth Wilson offers chiropractic services to Seneca and the surrounding areas. For appointment information, their phone number is 417-776-4556 or discover more at facebook.com slash Prairie Top Chiropractic. Prairie Top Chiropractic where their slogan is, better health, better you. People's Bank of Seneca, proudly investing in our community and you since 1996. Locations in Joplin, Neosho, and Seneca. Bank PBS, peoplesbankofseneca.com. Being a lion comes with a reputation for excellence. Whether it's in the classroom, on the court, or in the community, lions are leading the way with innovative and immersive academic programs, new scholarship opportunities, and a campus committed to the future. Now is the perfect time to find your purpose. Find your pride at Missouri Southern State University. And we welcome you back as we begin the second quarter of play, Seneca going left to right in the home whites. Up 13 to two as right wing three for Hazi rims out offensive rebound for Campbell. Campbell got double teamed, trying to get it to Collinsworth down low and I think the foul is gonna be on Collinsworth. As she picks up her second, team's first here in the second quarter. It wasn't a bad pass by Daylin, it was just a little bit. Late? Just a little late. Southwest trying to get the ball down low and throw it away. So Apologize. the ball goes back to Seneca. Apologize on the cameraman, can't keep up with the pass. <laughs> so Seneca ball up 13 to two. High low action, got girl at the, at, the top, at the free throw line and on the block. There she is, give it to her. She's, yeah, they're both kind of open. Landon going to drive, floater in the lane, no good. Offensive rebound for Collinsworth, can't get it to fall. But Collinsworth will go to the line for two. First team foul on Southwest here Fouls on the 13, Addison Payne, as Addison Payne picks up her first. Good move, good pull-up shot, just couldn't get the ball in the basket, and a good rebound by Collinsworth. It's the first free throw rims out. Yeah, we talked about how good they were shooting, didn't we? Cursed him. See if we can get the second one down here. Yes, here comes the second one, and that's no good. Offensive rebound for Campbell, no good. Another offensive rebound for Campbell. Back out to Hazy, fakes the three, free throw line jumper, no good. Collinsworth offensive rebound, goes back up strong, can't get rewarded. Another offensive rebound. Campbell kicks out to Staley, a three. That's no good. And Southwest comes away and I think Rockstead just fell. I, don't know if she I fell, thought, tripped over her feet, something. Yeah, for a second there, I thought maybe Campbell fouled her, but didn't. And a timeout by Southwest. 13 2, Seneca, 6.50 to go here in the first half here on the KNEO and Seneca Indian Sports Network. 
Marine Center Incorporated is a sponsor of Seneca Athletics. In business since 1979, they offer Mercury and Suzuki motors along with low boats as well as boat repairs. Located at 4961 Highway 43 in Joplin, Missouri, open Monday through Friday 9 to 5, Saturday 9 to 12, and closed on Sunday. For more information, the phone number is 417-781-7450 or online at marinecenterjoplin.com. The Marine Center Incorporated, where the slogan is, Your Family Boating Headquarters. At First Community Bank, we understand the importance of choice. That's why we offer our Community Choice Checking Account with you in mind. Say goodbye to monthly service fees and hello to free money with rewards and interest payments. Open a Community Choice Checking Account with First Community Bank and earn up to $100 in rewards. Make the right choice today. Visit firstcommunity.net. First Community Bank, where community comes first. Member FDIC, see Bank for complete details. And we welcome you back, 13-2 Seneca, 6.50 to go here in the first half of play as Southwest with the basketball. As they pick up their dribble in the corner, Rockstat with it. It's double teamed and it's stolen by Hazi. Hazi uh -huh. gets it through the double team to Staley, now to Lannon. Back out to Campbell, free throw line jumper for Campbell is not banked in. Collinsworth comes away with the rebound, left-handed yeah. layup up and in for Maddie Collinsworth to make it 15 to two. Second team foul on Southwest in the quarter. I didn't hear who got the foul. Waiting for them to put it up as Fields and I think that's Olivia Wade. That Zero. was the second foul on Swinepool as yeah. uh, the free throw is good for Collinsworth. So 16-2 Seneca with 6.20 to go here in the first half of play. As a she just walked with it. Travel on the play mm -hmm. by Southwest. Kind of drug her back foot just a little bit. As Hazy with it for Seneca, swings it to Fields. There you go. Free throw line to Campbell, trying to kick it out to Collinsworth, and it's a little too tall. And the ball will go back to Southwest. I, I always told them when they pay, make a pass like that, I said, I wish he was 6'5 and could catch that. <laughs> hey, uh, but Dalen's got him. That ball's thrown away, so it'll go back to Seneca. It's just like the, you've got to make those passes. You've got to give them in, the kids in position to make those passes. They've got to struggle sometimes, but in the long run, they'll be better. Hazy with it for the Lady Indians, swinging Look it. center. Trying to get it down low in the post to Campbell, but she was double teamed. As Rockstad picks up her dribble, gets it to Nem. Nem in the corner as they get double teamed and a steal by Fields. Fields is going to go one on O. Almost took too long, can't get it. Offensive rebound for Hazy. is back up and in. 18 2 Seneca. <laughs> She's slowing down, trying to make sure she can make that layup, and that's usually when you miss it. 5.30 to go here in the first half of play. Nem gets it to Harling down low. Nice pass, trying to swing it out to Rockstad, working against Ozzy and the ball stolen by Fields. Fields in the front court. Little floater is no good. Offensive rebound for Ozzy is no good. It's tipped around and out of bounds off of Seneca, so it will be Southwest basketball. Newmac Electric, Praetor's Pharmacy, Pro Lube Maintenance Center, Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Seneca <laughs> True Value, all sponsoring the broadcast here this evening. Southwest has it in the front court, getting double teamed and then losing her dribble was pain, but the jump ball keeps it with Southwest. Like we said, the Southwest team very young, one senior, two juniors, one sophomore, and four freshmen. So when you're playing, you know, I, I can remember three when or Southwest, four freshmen yeah. at a time, things like this will happen. Normally you're playing freshman or JV games instead of having to play varsity as Hazy gets the bucket to fall for Seneca. So they're up 20 to two, 440 to go here in the first half. Well, it, 
Like I said, I've seen Southwest when they filled up every chair over there. As Hawsey, another steal. Left-handed layup too strong. Offensive rebound for Fields. She just kind of threw it up there, there and it went in. Didn't use the backboard or anything. And it's 22 to two, Seneca, 420 to go here in the first half. Like I said, she's just gonna get better and better too. <laughs> Southwest with the basketball. Working with it is Rockstad and she is fouled. Seneca's first foul, uh, second foul of the quarter. I think I called it on Hazi, I think, yeah. As Hazi picks up her first. Seneca's backed off the pressure here a little bit in her 1-3-1 defense. So they get it into Rockstat. Rockstat works it left wing side to Harling, back to Nem. Almost traveled with it. The referee was <laughs> ready was. for it as the three is no good by Rockstat. Offensive rebound, left-handed layup is no good, and a rebound to Maddie Collinsworth. A couple good looks there for Southwest, just couldn't fall. And Seneca comes away with the basketball. Fields gets it to Wade, trying, not sure if that was a shot or a pass, and she may not know if that was a shot or a pass as Lannon will come in for Posse. Yeah, she kind of, it got blocked that time, it had a hand on it. Okay, it got tipped, so yeah. it stays Seneca basketball. Collinsworth triggers it into Wade, a long two is no good, and the rebound goes to Rockstat. Rockstat in the front court, swinging it right wing side. Driving to the hole is Harling, and they call a blocking foul. Third team foul on Seneca here in the <coughs> quarter. See who they call it on Wade, her first. There's lots of ones in the foul category. There's a couple twos as well. But we, like I said, we've got some. It's the long two is no good. Offensive rebound for Southwest, trying to get it to Payne, and I don't think she was expecting the pass. She wasn't expected at that speed, let's put it that way. But they're freshmen, they're a young team. Yeah, four freshmen on the team, so at least three of them probably have to be playing at one time. No. As down low, Campbell kicks out to Landon, an open three. No good, a rebound, Wade mm. fought for it, couldn't get it. Good look there for Ashton, just wouldn't fall for her. Top of the key, Nem, swinging it right wing side to Rockstad, and the pass was a little too tall as Sophia Connell check in for Seneca. You look at the benches here, you got two for Southwest, mm -hmm. and Seneca's bench is entirely <coughs> full. <coughs> Fields with it for the Lady Indians, swings it to Collinsworth, left wing to Lannon, who's going to drive baseline and get hacked. So Lannon will go to the line for two. That is the third team foul on Southwest here in the quarter. The Swan pole picks up her third. And we'll see how Lannon does from the free throw line and what her grandfather has to say about that. <laughs> her shot's been a little more arch this year, so it hasn't been too bad. It's the first one rims around and finally falls. It was a good shot. It just rattled all over the rim. Finally went in. And the three-pointer from the outside was right on target. She just As Jasmine Rivas checks in for Southwest, Sydney Staley in for Seneca. As Lannon's free throw is no good, and it's a violation. As Nem knew it, and Lannon kind of looked at her. Well. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think Ashton knew. Do I still shoot the ball? Well, yeah. yeah. Referees are still waiting. So, see her second attempt, third attempt at making a second free throw. It's no good, anyways. <laughs> One for two. Seneca up 23 to two. And a kicked ball by Revis. So the ball will go to Seneca. Seneca up 23 to 233 till we hit halftime. Collinsworth into Lannon. Down low in the post go. to Connell, and the shot was blocked. Good job there by Harling to get a piece of it. Well, she's finally figured out it's called a bounce pass. You're five foot nothing, it better be a bounce pass. 
As Callie Rhodes will check in, in for Collinsworth. So Rhodes to trigger it in. Getting it in to Connell, her jumper falls out and Nem the rebound. I think that hit almost every part of the rim right. except the part that mattered. Went all over it. She picked up her dribble, now left-handed, well, faking the shot was Harling as she got walled off. Top of the key three is no good for Rockstat and the rebound to Fields for Seneca. Lannon in the front court. Max. Right wing to Fields, almost too tall, able to get it back. No. Fields loses it, but it goes right to Rhodes, works it around to Lannon, a left wing three. Can't bank it in, Connell has it and then gets the ball stripped away by Harling. Harling picks up her dribble in the front court to Payne. Little floater for Nem is no good and Rhodes the rebound. Easy. Staley gets it to Lannon with 1.30 to go until we hit halftime. See if we can get a better shot this time. Rhodes, or excuse me, that was Lannon to Fields. Fields has not dribbled at all and almost dribbled into a trap. Saved it. And now a fight for it, Connell, and it's tipped around and Rockstat comes away with it for Southwest. Rockstat working one on four, loses it, gets it back, and now Lannon fighting for it and a jump ball with possession going to Seneca. <laughs> I'm laughing because she's in there on top of the basketball, as Ashton was, and he heard the whistle blown and she threw her hands back <laughs> like, I don't want to fight another foul. Well, yeah. <laughs> Campbell Biddlecom Funeral Home, Big Nickel, Missouri Southern State University, Marine Center Incorporated. As Connell has her girl walled off if you could get it to her. Nice move by Staley, can't get the ball to fall. Offensive rebound, put back is no good. So I think Sydney Staley will be going to the line as Olivia Nem picks up her first. Somehow she didn't have one until just now. How that's possible, I don't know. Who's that? Olivia uh, Nem. Yeah. I think everyone in the house has got one or two. So the first free throw is nothing but net for Staley. One more coming. Langford Insurance, Dairy Queen of Seneca, First Community Bank, Lost Creek Wireless, all sponsoring the broadcast as Staley misses the second one. So it's 24-2 Seneca, 40 seconds to go till we hit halftime. This Rockstat swings it to Nem. A right corner being guarded by Lannon. It's double teamed, and Staley just stole it because she's taller. Yeah, just took it away from her. Let's see if we can get down here and get a good shot. We haven't had one yet. We haven't had one here lately. Rhodes it with it right wing side. Looks like a 3-2 zone. It's the shot no good by Landon out of bounds to Southwest. Keep up on the latest Seneca broadcast ball game schedule. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com. Slash KNEO Radio. Follow us on Twitter at KNEO 917 Sports. See if Southwest can get a shot off here. And the half. They do. No good. Offensive rebound is no good either for Rockstead. And that will do the first half of play. At the end of the first half, Seneca has a 24 to 2 lead. We will take a Time out. Come back with the halftime show sponsored by Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine after this break. You're on the KNEO and Seneca Indian Sports Network. Seneca Indian Athletics is sponsored by Prairie Top Chiropractic. Located at 4556 Quince Road in Seneca, chiropractic physician Seth Wilson offers chiropractic services to Seneca and the surrounding areas. For appointment information, their phone number is 417-776-4556 
or discover more at facebook.com slash Prairie Top Chiropractic. Prairie Top Chiropractic, where their slogan is, better health, better you. Prater's Pharmacy in Seneca is a proud supporter of the Seneca Indians. The pharmacy is open from 9 to 5.30, Monday through Friday, and from 9 to 1 on Saturday. They offer an automatic refill program and internet refill service online at praterspharmacy.com and through their mobile apps. They also have a drive through window. Prater's Pharmacy at 1711 Cherokee in Seneca, 417-776-8701. Go Indians! I'm a Missouri Farm Bureau insurance agent. I'm for working hard for what you get and then protecting what you've got. Your home, your vehicles, your life. I'm for making an honest living and taking pride in what you do. And for giving back to the community I call home. I'm for serving my clients with the respect and dignity you would expect from the farmers that started this company. And though I know you probably hope you never need me, I'm here for you when you do. I'm a Missouri Farm Bureau insurance agent. And if you're a Missourian, I'm for you. I am Josh Dotson. Seneca True Value is an authorized dealer of Hustler lawnmowers and is a proud supporter of the KNEO and Seneca Indian Sports Network. Seneca True Value offers tools, equipment, and products for professional contractors and do-it-yourselfers. They are open 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday. Located at 404 Cherokee Avenue in Seneca. For more information, their phone number is 417-776-6000. Go Indians! A sponsor of Community Broadcasting on KNEO, Southwest Missouri Bank and Neosho. Serving the Neosho area from two locations, they offer personal banking services, including checking and savings accounts, home loans, and online banking. Learn more online at smbonline.com. Southwest Missouri Bank, an equal housing lender. Member FDIC, where their slogan is... Southwest Missouri Bank. And we welcome you back as we are here at the half the halftime show brought to you by Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Seneca, a 24-2 halftime lead. Six points for Olivia Hazi, five for Maddie Collinsworth, four for Dalen Campbell. And you have a bunch of players with two points apiece there for Seneca as well. The two points for Southwest is by Alexis Rockstat. We'll go ahead, take a time out, come back with more after this on the KNEO and Seneca Indian Sports Network. People's Bank of Seneca, proudly investing in our community and you since 1996. Locations in Joplin, Neosho, and Seneca. Bank PBS, peoplesbankofseneca.com. A new era in local sports begin. The Roper Kia Four State Sports Report is where you'll find all of your local sports information. Join sports director Michael Imami and reporters Chaz Wright and Tashina Coleman every night. We cover Little League, high school athletics, Missouri Southern, and Pittsburgh State, along with countless community colleges in the four states. We cover it all. So whether you're a Chiefs, Cardinals, Eagles, or Wildcats fan, you won't want to miss the Roper Kia Four State Sports Report. Happy Egg supports the family farmer because they've seen the difference a choice like this can make. Now you can grow for Happy Egg and choose to raise hens the right way, the happy way. When you grow for Happy Egg, you're growing for a family-owned and operated business. You're raising happy hens on 10-plus acres who will lay happy eggs. You're working for yourself. As a Happy Egg grower, you'll receive new flock cost support and yield-based compensation. Visit happyegg.com grower to apply today. A lot of people put Billy Graham on a pedestal. They thought if anyone could get into heaven by being a good Christian, Mr. Graham would make the cut. But he was the first person to disagree with that. I can't live the Christian life. Billy Graham is a total flop when it comes to living the Christian life. Wow, so if Billy Graham couldn't do it on his own, what hope do you and I have to get into heaven? Mr. Graham knew that hope comes from God. You don't inherit it. You don't deserve it. God gives it by grace. God just gives it to you if you reach up and receive by faith. 
If we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God hath raised from the dead, we shall be saved. You have to believe he's the son of God, that he died for you, that he rose again, that he's alive. Have more questions? Check out our website, findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. We're the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. KNEO would like to thank The Big Nickel for sponsoring this portion of broadcasting on 91.7 FM. The Big Nickel is an advertising shopper for thousands of different items, from automobiles and livestock to help wanted and real estate. It covers a 70-mile radius in the four-state area and is available in area businesses each week. Located at 2918 East 20th Street in Joplin, Missouri. Their telephone number is 417-624-4100. And we welcome you back as we're here at the half. The halftime show brought to you by Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Seneca 24-2 halftime lead here inside Seneca on a cold night. It's a nice night for basketball. Tomorrow night's games, Seneca plays Buffalo at 6 o'clock. Pre-game show about 5.40 tomorrow night. The nightcap tomorrow night is Southwest and Aurora. And then... Once again, they have moved Thursday's games to Wednesday. Wednesday's games are Southwest and Buffalo at 6, and Seneca and Aurora at 7.15. No broadcast on Wednesday evening. Come back, start of the second half after this break here on the KNEO and Seneca Indian Sports Network. Hard work, dedication, and teamwork are vital to building a championship team. Those are just a few of the many qualities you'll find with the team at Satterley Plumbing HVAC and Mechanical Contractors. Since 1892, the Satterley team has been delivering championship service to Joplin and the surrounding area. Satterley is an authorized dealer for quality Linux products and can keep your home feeling comfortable all year long. For repair or replacement of your current heating and air system, Contact the Satterley team today at 417-624-3660 or online at satterleyplumbing.com. Crowder College, your future, our focus. At Crowder College, we have six convenient locations in southwest Missouri and online programs to fit your needs. Flexible scheduling provides a pathway to a career or the opportunity to transfer to a four-year university in a variety of programs. Cheer for the Rough Riders at athletic events. Use the Missouri A-plus scholarship program for free tuition and common fees. At Crowder College, your future is our focus. Apply today at crowder.edu. The Neosho Area Chamber of Commerce is an organization that exists to make Southwest Missouri a better place to live. That is why they are proud supporters of high school athletics. They understand that the life lessons learned from sporting competition teaches responsibility and discipline and makes our student athletes better citizens for tomorrow. Learn more about local area events online at neoshocc.com. Proud supporters of local school athletics. Life is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. And we welcome you back as we start the second half of play. Southwest started with the ball, but couldn't get a shot to fall. And Seneca comes away with it going right to left here on your computer screen as Dalen Campbell gets the bucket. Sorry about that. I was watching the, <laughs> watching the pass to make sure it got down to the right spot at the right time. So it's 26-2 Seneca, 7.25 to go here. In the third quarter of play, a right corner three for Rockstad is good. I'll just call it a two. Oh, a long two. I might have had the wrong number, excuse me. But that might have been Alyssa Harling that hit the jumper there for Allison Harling for Southwest as that's their first made field goal of the evening. 
Seneca basketball. Landon with it, right corner. She's going to drive, gets walled off. Back out to Hazi. Hazi almost looked like she traveled with it. Three no good, but offensive rebound nice. by Staley, and she will get fouled. So Sydney Staley going to the line as Bree Hufford picks up her third. They say fourth, but I'm pretty sure they changed that to third. I think they, I think they had a correct a correction over there, Ben. I yeah. heard them say I did not see who they corrected it with. As the first free throw is good for Staley, one more. Yeah, I heard it. It went. The foul went from Hufford to Rockstead, so that is her third. Second free throw, no good. And the rebound goes to Southwest, down 27-4. 6.50 to go here in the third quarter of play. Staley trying to poke it out. And a steal by Hazy. Hazy going for the right-handed layup, no good, but two on one leaves a wide open rebound for Sydney Staley. Seneca 29-4 lead, 6.30 to go here. And a foul on Hazy, who picks up her second. Team's first here in the quarter. That's. That's the foul she's going to have to stay away from. Sorry. People's Bank of Seneca, Crowder College, Christian Healthcare Ministry, Seneca School District, SGA Unlimited, all sponsoring the broadcast. Rockstead going to pop a three, misses short. Fight for the rebound, and I think Collinsworth came away with it for Seneca. Landon with the top of the key, swings it to Hazy, drives the lane, floater too tall, or short, I should say. And the rebound goes to Rockstat. Foul trouble for both teams. Southwest has two with three as Nem gets fouled and hits the floater. So the bucket will go. And the foul on Seneca. I didn't see what number. I thought it might be Maddie. No, they no call or Staley. <laughs> yep, Staley. They called it on Sydney Staley, her first. As Nem missed the free throw. 29-6 Seneca, six minutes to go here in the third quarter. Seneca no. as a steal, and Rockstat gonna go up, left-handed layup no good, but now it's a three on O, the right-handed layup no good, tipped around, Southwest comes away with it, and Campbell able to tie her up. As Seneca needs seven points without Southwest scoring any to get a running clock in the fourth quarter. Southwest two field goals have come here in the third quarter as the free, th or the little thing is no good. Little thing, little <laughs> shot in the lane was no good for Rockstat. As she picks up her second and the second team foul here in the quarter. Landon swings it to Collinsworth, picked up her dribble, down low to Staley, and she is fouled. So Sydney Staley will go to the line for two. She's got three points here in the quarter already, five on the evening. As Addison Payne picks up her second, as the first free throw is good for Staley. One more coming, Seneca. It's getting their practice from the charity stripe tonight. Sponsors here this evening, Southwest Missouri Bank, Neosho Daily News, Siderly Plumbing, HVAC and Mechanical, Prairie Top Chiropractic as Cali Rhodes checks in. Second free throw falls in for Staley as Cali Fields will check in for Sydney Staley. 31-6 Seneca, 5.25 to go here in the third quarter of play. Four State Sports Report, Missouri Farm Bureau agent Josh Dotson, the Osho Area Chamber of Commerce, all sponsoring the broadcast as the ball is thrown right to Dalen Campbell of Seneca. Rhodes picks up her dribble to Fields, going to pop a right wing three, no good. And the rebound goes to Payne for Southwest. And... They got it to Harling, but I think she dribbled it off her own foot. Everyone at the Neosho Daily News wish the Seneca Indians good luck tonight. Ozzy with the basketball for Seneca, up 31 to six, 4.55 to go here. Ozzy in the corner, a long two is good. 
for Olivia Hazi. She now has eight. And it's a 33-6 lead for Seneca. 4.40 to go here in the third quarter. So Rockstead drives, kicks it out, faking the three. It was Huford. Back out right wing side to Harling who drives. Nice floater in the lane. Up and in for Allison Harling. Let's make it 33 to eight. Collinsworth working one on one. Stops, kicks it to Campbell and Campbell banks it in. She's got eight on the night, four here in the quarter. Seneca up 35 to eight. That's what I'd be doing as much as possible, is pounding the ball down inside of Dalen. But well, floater in the rain, trying to bank it in. Was Huford no good? Get it to Fields in the front court. Fields gets bumped, throws it up, can't get it to go, but she's fouled. Fourth <coughs> team foul, third team foul. No, I was right, fourth team foul on Southwest and the third on Allison Paint. Two free throws here for Cali Fields. So here comes the first free throw. Rims out, one more coming. That's a good shot. Uh, she hadn't played since seventh grade year. That was a good shot though. She's got a good shot, good release. It's just gonna get better all year. One more here for Fields. The second free throw is up and short. So the lead stays 35 to eight. New Mac Electric, Prater's Pharmacy, Prolu Maintenance Center, Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Seneca True Value as the right-handed layup off the steal is up and in for Cali Fields. 3.35 to go here in the third quarter. Southwest with it, got the ball poked out by Fields. Fields gonna work one-on-one, -on -one. a right-handed layup is no good, but she will go back to the free throw line. <laughs> Other sponsors, Campbell Bettelcombe Funeral Home, Big Nickel, Missouri Southern State University, Green Center Incorporated. Fifth team foul in Southwest in the quarter, and the fourth on Addison Payne. First free throw is good for Fields. One more coming as, as Alexis Rockstack comes back in as Payne sits with four. Huford and Swainpool with three. Another foul trouble for Southwest as both are good for Fields. 39-8 Seneca, 3.20 to go here, third quarter. Nem with it for Southwest, gets it to Rockestet being harassed by Hazy. She's going to drive, pull up, her jumper is a little bit long, and Campbell and Rhodes fight for the rebound, as I think that's Connell is about to check in. And I would be wrong. 33. That's McKaylee Mitchell. Yeah, Seneca making sure everybody getting some playing time here. As a steal by the Lady Indians. And Hazy is fouled. And it might be by Rockstadt, which that would be her fourth as well. So Hazy goes to the line for two. It's actually her third. third. <laughs> and it's Hasi will go to the line for two. The first one is short. Langford Insurance, Dairy Queen of Seneca, First Community Bank, and Lost Creek Wireless all sponsoring the broadcast. Did they, call, did they say it two more? Or just one more? Well, that answers that question. The ball goes out of bounds as Ozzie can't hit either free throw. Seneca will inbound though as it was tipped off a Southwest player. Ozzie gonna pop a three, no good. Offensive rebound for Collinsworth is no good. Offensive rebound for Campbell is no good. And now Campbell will be going to the free throw line. And Swinepole picks up her fourth. So you got two players with four and two players with three for Southwest, and you have seven players total. So the first free throw by Campbell is in. Yeah. One more coming. 
Southwest could have a scenario where they're playing with four or three in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not good. The second free throw is good by Campbell as well. I got a feeling the referees will get together and it's usually what happens. As Fields picks up a cheapie. Her third, or team third, and Fields picks up her second. As 31. Bella Middick will see some playing time. You're seeing a bunch of JV players get some time. So they try and get it down low, and the ball poked out by Collinsworth from behind, but that's an over-the-back call. As Collinsworth picks up her third. Seneca, 21-8 Seneca, 2.47 to go here in the third quarter. As Ashton Landon will check back in. We'll come in for Maddie Collinsworth. So Southwest no. will get it in. A long two is no good. Fight for the rebound. Southwest comes away with it. Easy. Kick it out to Swinepole. A three is deflected as Rockstadt went up with it. And it must have went off a Southwest player because Seneca comes away with the basketball. Mm. People's Bank of Seneca, Crowder College, Christian Healthcare Ministry, Seneca School District, SGA Unlimited on sponsoring the broadcast as Lannon traveled with it. No, it was Hazy. Hazy oh. didn't know there was defense behind her. Oh, okay. <coughs> I had my head down as Southwest able to get it in. Now they call a foul. And if that's on Huford, that is on 11, which Swinepool just fouled out. So... She just fouled out as Addison Payne will have to check in for her. And we will see who's going to shoot free throws here for Seneca. Yeah, it was, it was on Callie Field. I mean, she fouled Callie Field. Callie came up with the ball, and the other girl was just going after and kind of knocked Callie down. So you only got one sub right now for Southwest and Payne with four fouls, Huford and Rockstadt with three as the first free throw is good for Fields. One more coming. As Staley will check in for the shooter if Fields can make it. As Fields' second one is short. Nem comes away with it for Southwest. Ball tipped out of bounds. It will stay Southwest basketball. Staley will check in for Fields. So they will trigger it in right baseline. Gets it in the corner. A right corner three is no good for Harling and the rebound to Lannon. I have no idea how she comes down with them sometimes. So Lannon with it. Right wing side to Mitchell. Down low to Staley. Right hand to layup is no good. Tipped around. Staley somehow out with it to Hazy. Hazy going to drive. Floater in the lane is up and in for Olivia Hazy. Uh, Seneca has scored 20 points here in the third quarter with still 150 to go. As Landon fighting with Rockstat and a jump ball, possession arrow will give it to Seneca. Southwest Missouri Bank, Neosha Daily News, Saturday Plumbing, HVAC and Mechanical, Prairie Top Chiropractic, all sponsoring the broadcast here this evening. Seneca and Buffalo get the night started tomorrow night. Six o'clock is going to be tip off. 540 will be the pregame here from Seneca. Mitchell down low to Staley. Back out to Lannon, a three is missed long. And then it's poked out of bounds by Hazy. So it will stay Southwest basketball. Down 44 to eight. Three field goals here in the quarter for Southwest. After not being able to get a field goal there in the first half. Rockstad gonna pop a three and that's good. She now has five and Southwest in double digits. 
at 11. With 110 to go here in the third quarter. Landon in the front court. Picks up her dribble to Mitchell. Mitchell down low to Staley. Trying to kick it to Middick, and Middick loses it. He's driving on the other end, got the ball poked, and they call a light foul on Mitchell. It's the fifth team foul, so free throws are coming for Southwest. As she picks up her first. So two free throws here for Harling, who's got four for Southwest. First free throw rims out, one more coming. Four State Sports Report, Missouri Farm Bureau agent Josh Dotson, the OSHA Chamber of Commerce, all sponsoring the broadcast. She can't hit either free throw, and somehow Landon comes away with a rebound yeah. again. Shortest girl on the field. Hazy going to drive. And she gets fouled by Harling, and somehow Harling does not have a foul. That's her first. I don't know how that's possible, but yeah. that's Hazy. We'll shoot two free throws. She's the only, well, I think, I don't have to do some addition, but as far as I know, she's the only player in double figures for Seneca. She now has 11. Well, Hazi's aggressive. She can take it in there. She's missed some runners inside, but she will learn how to take that extra dribble and come up and shoot. Seneca, 46-11 with 35 seconds to go here in the quarter. Nem drives her floater, falls out, rebound to Mitchell, and then almost got it off of Nem, and I think Nem hit her head. And it goes out of bounds. Not sure what happened, but. I wonder if she didn't take an elbow in the head. And so they stopped time there for a second. Her and Kaylee Mitchell were kind of fighting for the ball. And 46 to 11, and Staley going for a steal. Rockstead comes away with it for Southwest. And uh, scrummed around. Hazy going to drive. And the bucket up and in for Olivia Hazy to end the quarter. A big quarter for Seneca as they score 24 at the end of three. It's Seneca 48 and Southwest 11. People's Bank of Seneca, proudly investing in our community and you since 1996. Locations in Joplin, Neosho, and Seneca. Bank PBS. PeoplesBankofSeneca.com. Prater's Pharmacy in Seneca is a proud supporter of the Seneca Indians. The pharmacy is open from 9 to 5.30 Monday through Friday and from 9 to 1 on Saturday. They offer an automatic refill program and internet refill service online at praterspharmacy.com and through their mobile apps. They also have a drive through window. Prater's Pharmacy at 1711 Cherokee in Seneca, 417-776-8701. Go Indians! Seneca Indian Athletics is sponsored by Prairie Top Chiropractic. Located at 4556 Quince Road in Seneca, chiropractic physician Seth Wilson offers chiropractic services to Seneca and the surrounding areas. For appointment information, their phone number is 417-776-4556 or discover more at facebook.com slash Prairie Top Chiropractic. Prairie Top Chiropractic where their slogan is, better health, better you. Dalen Campbell hits a bucket there to start the third, fourth quarter of play for Seneca as they have a 50-11 lead. 
as the ball is thrown out of bounds. So the ball will go back to Seneca. We do have a turbo clock here. Mm -hmm. As Seneca will get the basketball. And you're seeing a lot of JV players getting some time as a steal there for Harling of Southwest. Swinging it in the right corner to Rockstat. Picked up her dribble and a jump ball. Possession arrow will give it to Seneca. Keep up on the latest Seneca broadcast ball game schedule. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio. Follow us on Twitter at KNEO 917 Sports. Seneca and Buffalo get the night started tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. Is the first night of our first game as Campbell down low can't get the shot to fall. Collinsworth the rebound out to land and her jumper is no good. Collinsworth the rebound and she gets yeah. fouled. So Collinsworth will go to the line for two. We'll see who the foul's on. It's the first on Southwest in the quarter. It's the second on Nemp. So Seneca and Buffalo. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock, we'll have that game for you as well. It's the first free throw is no good for Collinsworth. Running clock here in the fourth quarter, so this fourth quarter will only take seven minutes. Well, it's, eight minutes, excuse me. It's, it's, uh, it's good work by Collinsworth down inside for rebound. Got like two or three offensive rebounds and kickouts. Collinsworth goes one for two. 51-11 Seneca, 5.30 to go here. In the ball game as losing it off her foot was a Southwest player. And now a jump ball as you're going to see Cordy Hancock and Sophia Connell check back in for Seneca. So you are seeing a lot of JV players get some playing time here for the Lady Indians. Buffalo got wow. beat by Aurora as the right-handed layup is no good for Rockstat, but she's fouled by Lannon. It's the first team foul in Seneca in the quarter. Lannon second. But two free throws here for Rockstat, who has five to lead Southwest. First free throw is up and misses. One more coming. Once again, the Thursday night games have been moved to Wednesday night. We don't have that broadcast, though, as Seneca plays Aurora. As Rockstack can't hit either, rebound goes to Bailey Edwards, and she double dribbled. Edwards is only a sophomore, I believe. So, pretty young team here for Seneca. They only have... They have two freshmen out there as well. You would think next couple years this Seneca team might be pretty good if they can all stay together. As Hancock travels with it. So we're set to see a couple more subs as Olivia Wade and now Brooklyn Keller check in for Seneca. So Seneca will improve to one and one on the season with the win. No idea what Southwest records will go to. Right wing now in the corner, Southwest has it. Back out top of the key towards the left wing side is Payne. Nem gonna drive, little floater in the lane up and in for Nem. Makes it 51-13. Three minutes to go here in the contest. It's Hazy with the basketball <laughs> for Seneca. Yeah, you missed the steal down inside taking the stats, Ben. Down low, Hancock's floater in the lane is no good. Fight for the rebound between Payne and Seneca player, and it's a foul on Seneca. As Brooklyn Keller picks up her first, team second. As Hazy checks out. And Fields checks back in. 2.30 and counting here in Seneca. As both of these games here 
on day one have had running clocks in the fourth quarter. I think Seneca and Buffalo might be a better matchup tomorrow night. The good one. Buffalo's got some kids that can play. It's driving the lane. Rockstat was able to work through but can't get the floater to fall as Fields with it for Seneca. Swings it to Hancock. Back to Fields. Going to pop a three. That's no good. I don't think Seneca has made a three all night long. They have not needed to tonight, but. No, but you, you're going to have to have a few of them through the year. As Nem with it for Southwest, working the lane, trying to work through was Huford, and she's fouled. That's the third team foul on Seneca. The second on Connell, but it was not a shooting foul. So the ball goes back as the left-handed layup is no good. And they call a foul on Seneca, fourth team foul. <coughs> I think the same one. I think Sophia Connell picked up a slapping foul down inside. Which would be her third, and you would be correct. Right. So we're under a minute to go now in the contest as Nem can't grab it, see if Hancock can. Oh. I think Hancock picks up a foul, and that's the fifth team foul, so Nem should be going to the free throw line. As Hancock picks up her first. This just might about do it with how long it takes to shoot free throws. It could. <clears throat> Get close. Get this clock over with. It's the first free throw rims out. That hit about every aspect of the rim without going in for Nem. One more coming. As here comes the second one. That one's short. Hancock went too far, but coming away with the rebound was Wade. Fields in the front court to Hancock. I don't think Seneca is going to bother taking a shot here. So they will improve to one and one on the season with a 51-13 win. Southwest falls here this evening. The postgame show brought to you by Crowder College and the Seneca School District. After this timeout, here on the KNEO and Seneca Indian Sports Network. People's Bank of Seneca, proudly investing in our community and you since 1996. Locations in Joplin, Neosho, and Seneca. Bank PBS, peoplesbankofseneca.com. If you're a weekend warrior who likes to go, 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 don't let pain put the brakes on your pace. When you need help with an injury that keeps you from moving, you want an orthopedic team with a proven track record. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is nationally recognized and were recently named CareCheck's number one hospital in the market and top 10% hospital in the state for hip fracture repair. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the experience you need to keep pace with life. Prater's Pharmacy in Seneca is a proud supporter of the Seneca Indians. The pharmacy is open from 9 to 5.30, Monday through Friday, and from 9 to 1 on Saturday. They offer an automatic refill program and internet refill service online at praterspharmacy.com and through their mobile apps. They also have a drive through window. Prater's Pharmacy at 1711 Cherokee in Seneca, 417-776-8701. Go Indians! A proud supporter of local high school athletics is Numac Electric. Serving Newton and McDonald County, they provide power for area homes and businesses and want to wish all the athletes much success throughout the season. For online bill pay and account information, the website is numac.com or 417-451-1515. Numac Electric, proudly serving Newton and McDonald County, where their slogan is, your touchstone energy partner. The Seneca R7 School District is proud to support the student athletes and coaches competing in this game. High school activities help students learn life values such as hard work, 
dedication, and teamwork. The Seneca R7 School District is honored to serve such a great community and wants to thank all the Indian fans for their great support. The Seneca R7 School District. Tradition. Pride. Class. At ProLube Tire and Auto Center, we know what it means to rely on your vehicle. We race all year and know how to get that extra inch out of every part. Precision, quality, and reliability are not just words to us. It's what we do every day. We know you rely on your vehicle to perform for your family. From oil changes to full-on repairs, ProLube gives you the best racetrack team experience so you can be worry-free. ProLube Tire and Auto Center, where we get it right on the road and the track. Seneca Indian Athletics is sponsored by Prairie Top Chiropractic. Located at 4556 Quince Road in Seneca, chiropractic physician Seth Wilson offers chiropractic services to Seneca and the surrounding areas. For appointment information, their phone number is 417-776-4556 or discover more at facebook.com slash Prairie Top Chiropractic. Prairie Top Chiropractic, where their slogan is, better health, better you. A proud backer of the Seneca Indians is Campbell Biddlecombe Funeral Home of Seneca. Located at 1101 Cherokee, they are honored to serve the area with traditional service options including church and graveside services. They also have prearranged funeral plans. For more information, the phone number for Funeral Director Mike Steele at Campbell Biddlecombe Funeral Home of Seneca is 417-776-2251 or online campbell-biddlecombefh.com. Hard work, dedication, and teamwork are vital to building a championship team. Those are just a few of the many qualities you'll find with the team at Satterley Plumbing HVAC and Mechanical Contractors. Since 1892, the Satterley team has been delivering championship service to Joplin and the surrounding area. Satterley is an authorized dealer for quality Linux products and can keep your home feeling comfortable all year long. For repair or replacement of your current heating and air system, contact the Satterley team today at 417-624-3660 or online at satterleyplumbing.com. And we welcome you back to the post-game show sponsored by Crowder College and the Seneca School District. Seneca wins 51-13, the final score, and coach, good win for the Indians as they pick up their first win and hopefully get themselves some confidence going in tomorrow night against the Buffalo team. Well, yeah, it's always good pick up that first win, get a uh, to get one underneath your belt, okay? And uh, and I know Southwest is down right now, but uh, still yet there were some good things happening out there. We, we took the ball to the basket well. We did. Uh, we got to be a little bit better handling the basketball and a little bit better pulling up, shooting the shots. Instead of the running floaters, we will see the girls got to learn to pull up and shoot the shot, and they're going to get better at that. I've seen some. Uh, a lot of improvement. They've got a lot of improvement to do, but I, you could see it moving in the right direction. A lot of balance scoring for this team. Hawsey led the way with 14, Campbell with 12, but Sidney Staley with 7, Callie Fields with 7, Maddie Collinsworth with 6. That's the kind of effort you're going to have to see all year long for Seneca to pick up victories. Well, if you notice, that bench is pretty full over there, and then, and he got a lot of players in just – because of the type of game it was. But it doesn't look like he's scared to put in, you know, 10 players. And that's not a bad thing, you know, if you've got – they're all about the same. They're all about moving up. They're all about trying to get better. And if you got some kids that you can keep fresh through the year, that always helps in the third and fourth quarter. Go ahead, take another timeout, come back with more of the post game after this on the KNEO and Seneca Indian Sports Network. Dairy Queen Grill and Chill in Seneca is the place to go before or after the game. Check out their amazing menu of fan-favorite blizzards like Oreo or Cookie Dough. Happy hour is daily from 2 to 5 p.m. That means everything you can drink from a straw is half price, excluding premium shakes. Don't forget to grab one of their $7 meal deals or their signature stack burgers and top it off with a misty slush. The Dairy Queen Grill and Chill in Seneca, located at 308 Washington, open daily from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Proud to support the Seneca Indians. 
SGA Unlimited is a proud sponsor of the Seneca Indians. Located north of Seneca on Highway 43, they offer equipment and supplies for outdoor sporting needs, including hunting and fishing. They are a licensed gun dealer and provide bait and accessories for fishing. For more information, their phone number is 417-439-1996. Proud supporters of Seneca Indian Athletics on KNEO. I am a Missouri Farm Bureau insurance agent, and I'm here to talk about life, your life, your dreams, your work, your family, and how you can protect it all with a company that will talk to you with the honesty of a farmer and take care of you with the integrity of a neighbor. I'll make sure no detail is left uncovered so your family can breathe easy. Because just like you, I chose to build a life in Missouri too. I'm a Missouri Farm Bureau insurance agent, and I'm from Missouri for life. I am Josh Dotson with Missouri Farm Bureau Insurance Services. If you are in Missouri, I'm for you. Locally owned, operated, and here for you. Check out the new face of the Neosho Daily News, covering Newton County, highlighting area residents, businesses, school news, sports, and more. Find us on Facebook at Neosho Daily News or call 417-451-1520. Go get them, Indians! And we welcome you back to the post-game show sponsored by Crowder College and the Crow and the Seneca School District. Yeah, we got Coach Schulte here. Uh, hey, got a first W for the uh, for the season. W is always a W. It's always good to hey, have that first one. Feels good. Uh, you know, overall, I thought the girls played well tonight. Uh, defensive way, uh, I thought they did well. Uh, we had a little bit of letdown here and there, but for the most part, I'm pleased with it. We get something to build on. Well, like I say, you've got a lot of kids coming off that bench this year. It doesn't, it doesn't look like to me that you're scared to go down to, you know, 10 deep at least. No. Uh, the, way, the way I look at it right now, the more people get playing time, the, the better off I'm going to be this year and in the long run as well. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, if you can keep the girls fresh, you've got a better chance late in the third and, and in going into the fourth quarter. Exactly. You know, with the up-tempo type defense we play, I like to trap them basically everywhere get up in their face you know defense we've got to be fresh otherwise we're going to have letdowns well if you're going to play that type of defense uh you better have the backups because you're going to get in more foul trouble doing that exactly that's, that's, that's just the way the game is exactly you know we play aggressive basketball uh that's who we are that's who what we want to do sometimes do we need to back off at times yes but for the most part it's easier it's easier turning it down than it is turning it up what I did see tonight, I mean, they, they came out in a 1-2-2 two, two zone, and finally we started hitting the high post down in, you know. That's, that's something we worked back. on uh, since since our last game was hitting that high post and then looking down short corner and then kind of, you know, playing off what we do there. And I'm, and I'm looking down inside and I see Dalen Campbell. She's missing some baskets, but, boy, she is doing some good things. She is inside. doing some good things. Uh, you know, this, you got to remember she's, she's a junior still. So she is young. Uh, you know, this is going to be your first full year, you know, playing lots of minutes. Um, so, you know, there's a little bit of a growth period. But for, for tonight, there's, there's some shots. There's some moves that she did. Uh, I was very pleased with. Of course, there's one time she drives to her left really, really well, finishes with her left hand really well. And uh, I said, by God, use it. You can do it. Use it. Well, that, if you can get some girl to drive left and use the left, uh, that usually throws the other girl defensive off. I, I I don't know why that was, and I couldn't hardly get that through the girls when I was coaching. It's like, no, she can go left, but they really don't know how to guard some girl that can do that. Mm -hmm. Got a good left hand. Yeah, I mean, you, you become more uh, one-dimensional, especially when you start mixing that left hand in there. Well, if you can go both ways, you become a full player then, you know. You become pretty tough. Yeah, and what I've seen was on the – and that was down inside, did some good work there. Uh, handle the basketball, the guards on the outside. Uh, you know, young, you got Hazy, was a sophomore. Mm -hmm. And then you got Ashton Lannon, of course, mm -hmm. and then junior. And uh, and then Callie Fields. Mm -hmm. A lot of those girls hadn't seen a lot of varsity time. That's right. You know, and they, they did. They made some good moves to the basket, made some good pull-up shots. And I was telling Ben, I said, they're going to learn to take that extra dribble to the rim. Exactly. Or – make the defense come to them and learn to hit that bounce pass down exactly. inside. And, you know, it's, it's something they're young. They're still learning. I thought they did a better job tonight than they did here the other day. And, uh, you know, as long as I'm seeing growth and improvement, that's all I can ask for. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're, I think they're on the 
I think th- I see those things, but I see improvement just a little bit a- along the way, and I think we're going to see that all year long. Yes, I, I do too. Okay, Coach, we're going to let you go. All right, thank Get you. back in, so appreciate you coming up. Hey, appreciate and, you guys uh, being out here. Hey, good luck. Uh, we will be here tomorrow night with uh, Buffalo. All right, thank you. As Seneca comes away with a victory here, 51-13, the final score. We will go ahead and take our final break, come back, and wrap it up after this on the KNEO and Seneca Indian Sports Network. Hi, this is Jamie Lankford with Lankford Insurance at 910 Washington Avenue in Seneca, Missouri. My wife Terry and I are proud to serve our local community and support local high school student athletes. Lankford Insurance specializes in life, agribusiness, commercial, and personal insurance needs. Please stop by and see us at our office or call us at 417-776-LIFE or visit us at www.midaminsurance.com. A new era in local sports begin. The Roper Kia Four State Sports Report is where you'll find all of your local sports information. Join sports director Michael Imami and reporters Chaz Wright and Tashina Coleman every night. We cover Little League, high school athletics, Missouri Southern, and Pittsburgh State, along with countless community colleges in the four states. We cover it all. So whether you're a Chiefs, Cardinals, Eagles, or Wildcats fan, you won't want to miss the Roper Kia Four State Sports Report. Happy Egg supports the family farmer because they've seen the difference a choice like this can make. Now you can grow for Happy Egg and choose to raise hens the right way, the happy way. When you grow for Happy Egg, you're growing for a family owned and operated business. You're raising happy hens on 10 plus acres who will lay happy eggs. You're working for yourself. As a Happy Egg grower, you'll receive new flock cost support and yield based compensation. Visit happyegg.com grower to apply today. First Community Bank offers reliable, cost-effective merchant services to help your business thrive. We have options tailored just for you and your business, including accepting all major credit card brands, plus contactless payments like tap to pay and pay by phone. Don't miss out on growing your business. Contact First Community Bank today and unlock a world of payment possibilities. First Community Bank, where community comes first. Member FDIC. Jesus was crucified, two other men were also crucified. But unlike Jesus, who had done nothing wrong, these two were paying for their crimes. One of them made fun of Jesus, but the other man, he believed Jesus Christ was God's son. And Jesus promised that man he'd go to heaven. Even though there was no time for him to clean up his act here. How could that be? Billy Graham. He was saved by the sheer mercy and grace of God, not because he could get down from the cross and live a good life. The Bible teaches that God is a God of mercy, that no matter what sin anybody has ever committed in history, if we truly repent, God will forgive. He has to forgive because his word says so. No matter what you've done, God will forgive you if you turn your life over to him. Discover how to do that at findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. We're the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. And we welcome you back for the final time as Seneca wins 51-13 postgame show sponsored by Crowder College and the Seneca School District. Seneca plays Buffalo tomorrow night, 6 o'clock start time, 5.40 air time here from Seneca. That will do it, though, here this evening as Seneca comes away with the victory for Coach Dara Harbaugh. I'm Ben Wolcott saying so long here from Seneca. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. This has been a live production of KNEO Sports. This broadcast may not be reproduced or retransmitted without the express written consent of KNEO Sports Network. This has been a sporting outreach of KNEO Sports Network.